let me introduce Anna Sislak. So Anna, you are Associate Professor of Finance at Duke University, Fuka School of Business in the US. And uh, we also share, you and me, one thing in common is that I think you, you worked um, uh, for the Bank of International Settlements in, in Basel as a research fellow in 2014 and 2019. And uh, you conduct research in macrofinance and empirical asset pricing with emphasis on fixed income markets. Your work has been published in leading academic journals, including Journal of Finance, Review of Financial Studies, and Journal of International Economics. So, Anna, the floor is yours for 30 minutes, and we'll be following up with 10 minutes of Q&A. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us to present. Um, so, so let me just start with a, a couple of quotes for, for, from former chairs uh, of the Fed uh, who uh, think about uncertainty as the pervasive feature or defining characteristics of uh, the landscape in which they are operating and they are making decisions. And in fact, Philip in his intro remarks also mentioned the intrinsic uncertainty that is out there that, that uh, policymakers are facing. So we ask a very simple question, uh, how actually uncertainty affects policymaking? And um, there are a few uh, strict uh, results uh, that would allow to answer this, this question cleanly on the theoretical front, we really have a multitude of predictions that depend on model specification. And from the empirical standpoint, both measurement of uncertainty is challenging, as well as identification of the causal effects of uncertainty is difficult. So uh, what we are going to do in this paper is to propose a, a, a measurement uh, of policymakers' uncertainty uh, using text we'll refer to those measures as PMUs, for policymakers' uncertainty, and we'll rely on a detailed analysis of the F1C transcripts. We'll distinguish between different sources of uncertainty that policymakers face, uh, thinking about real and nominal variables, financial markets, and models. Um, and finally, we will analyze the effect that uh, PMU has on policymaking in terms of policymakers' preferences, and obviously these preferences then uh, 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 propagate onto the policy surprises that Michael has been talking about. So what are the channels through which, in general, uncertainty could affect policymaking? So let's just think a very, uh, about a very standard uh, reaction function where the Fed has some instruments and is responding uh, uh, with a phi, set of phi coefficients to the state of the economy described by this omega. There are three broad types of reactions uh, or effects that uncertainty could induce on monetary policy. So the first one is particularly uninteresting because in many standard models, linear in linear quadratic models, uh, the uh, certainty equivalence principle would imply that uncertainty is, uh, has no effects on policymaking. More interestingly, there is obviously a large literature that thinks about uh, uncertainty as being a demand shock, and then the policy starts reacting to that shock to the extent that it affects the state of the economy that policymakers perceived, but not beyond that. And then finally, uh, there is a uh, large literature studying the uncertainty that policymakers face about parameters and models and or models. And here we really have quite different predictions depending on what the source of uncertainty is. So in particular, when policymakers are unsure about policy multipliers, that is how they would affect the economy, this could lead to a more cautious response, and this is what is known as the Brainard's conservatism principle. However, it turns out that as soon as we uh, switch on uncertainty about the economic dynamics that policymakers face, for example, inflation persistence, or we allow policymakers to be unsure about the correct, the correct model specification, then this could induce a more aggressive response. So we really don't know, uh, given the existing evidence, 
how policymakers behave uh, in the face of uncertainty. So to make progress on this question, we uh, start by uh, proposing a measurement approach to understand first policymakers' uncertainty and then how it affects the decision making. So we'll use the setting of the FOMC, uh, the US Federal Reserve, where we have really a wealth of information that will allow us to construct proxies for policymakers' beliefs, their uncertainty, and their preferences in a way that is mutually consistent. Um, uh, and such consistency is rarely feasible in other contexts. We'll observe speaker st statement, uh, statements at the sentence level in the FOMC transcripts over more than three decades of data. And we will also have a rich set of controls for the first moments, that is beliefs and forecasts about the state of the economy. To uh, achieve identification of uncertainty effects on policymaking and therefore on the surprises that, that we see in the markets, uh, we'll exploit the regular structure of the FOMC meetings that has been uh, uh, there for, uh, for the entire span of our sample period. In particular, we'll use the discussions in the economy round to identify the different types of uncertainty that policymakers are faced with. And then uh, we'll ask how do these uh, different types of uncertainty affect the policy preferences that FOMC members express in the policy round. And the, uh, uh, the assumption here is that the economy round discussions are free of expression of uh, how policy itself could induce uncertainty in the economy. So it is purely uncertainty that policymakers face as they go into the meeting. The key assumption underlying uh, our construction of uncertainty indices is that the PMUs uh, correlate with the frequency and intensity with which policymakers express uncertainty in the meeting. And we will use tools from uh, computational lin linguistics uh, to first construct measures of overall uncertainty in the economy round, and then to separate out different types of uncertainty that policymakers face. We also will obtain a set of text textual controls, co controls for variation in what we call sentiment or directional language about the uh, course of the economy. So we take a relatively broad view on what uncertainty means. And this is reflective of the challenges that policymakers themselves face when they, uh, uh, when they think about uncertainty. Uh, in theory, we have a pretty clean uh, sense and distinction between the notion of risk and the notion of the so-called Knightian uncertainty. In practice, however, one is never quite sure what type of uncertainty one, uh, one is dealing with. And so it is useful to think about that as a continuum. And so ref to reflect those practical difficulties that policymakers face, we'll take a, uh, a broad approach to measuring uncertainty. And we'll start with uh, word embeddings, focusing on two terms, terms uh, related to risk and terms related to uncertainty. And we will estimate a model that tells us what are the close synonyms appearing in the economy round to risk vis-a-vis uh, -vis to, uh, uh, to risk and uncertainty. And uh, here in this table, I'm showing you a set of estimates uh, that come out from this exercise. Uh, interestingly, risk embeddings are associated with quantifiable notions of uh, risk, that is probability, likelihood, odds, whereas uncertainty embeddings uh, have a, a relationship with anxiety, angst, interestingly, ambiguity, and so on. So there does seem to be a separation in language as to how policymakers talk about risk vis-a-vis -vis uncertainty. 
But then uh, we'll, uh, given this broad approach that we take, we'll combine those two and only at certain point try to see whether, uh, whether uh, there is uh, any significant distinction in how policymakers think about the two dimensions of uncertainty. So uh, we start by constructing an overall measure of policymakers' uncertainty, the PMU index, simply as being the intensity in which the uncertainty risk terms appear in the policy round relative to all the words that are being expressed in that round. And uh, here you can uh, see the overall dynamics of our PMU index uh, express, uh, which is expressed uh, as fraction of uncertainty words in overall in overall uh, length of the economy round. So you see that they occupy probably 1.5 percent of all words in that round. And you can see that there are some usual sus suspects where uncertainty spikes, such as financial crisis. Uh, or wars. Here we have Iraq war. In general, uncertainty, uh, policymakers' uncertainty seems to be higher in a more recent part of the sample and declines in uh, 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 the last part of the sample. The data is rich, and so we could disaggregate the data in a variety of ways. There is significant heterogeneity in expressed uncertainty across different members. Uh, of the FOMC. And here you can see the, their own expression of uncertainty in the meeting compared to what is happening in the meetings that they are present uh, on average. And again, there is substantial heterogeneity, the richness of which allows us to study also uh, individual level effects of uncertainty on policy preferences. In this talk, however, I will focus more on the aggregate results. Now, obviously, policymakers don't face just one source of uncertainty. And for our purposes, it turns out to be really difficult, to be really important to separate the different types of uncertainty that policymakers are facing. We will focus on four types of uncertainty uh, that uh, occupy uh, the bulk of space in policy de deliberations uh, the inflation uncertainty related to nominal variables the real economy uncertainty related to the real economy, labor markets, productivity, et cetera, and financial markets uncertainty that policymakers also discuss frequently in, in the meeting and pay a lot of attention to. And the fi final category uh, of explicit topics will be the model uncertainty, uh, which by the way, uh, Philip also mentioned talking about uncertain intrinsic un uncertainty and structural change so this is exactly what this category would be picking up uh, we have an unclassified category of uncertainty mentions uh, these are all dimensions that we fail to attribute to any of the four other categories so let us take a look at the time series dynamics of these uh, different uncertainty types of or topic specific pmus and uh, what you can see here is, again, uncertainty indices expressed on the y-axis as a fraction of time that is being spent discussing a particular type of uncertainty. And so we are able to classify uh, about 84% of all mentions of uncertainty into our four explicit topic categories. Um, and so the bulk of the mentions will be associated with inflation, real economy, and financial markets. Interestingly, the inflation and the economy uncertainty, for example, are only very weakly correlated with each other, having a correlation of about 0 0.1. So now let me establish a few facts about the PMUs, policymaker uncertainty, before we jump into discussing its implications for policymaking. So the fact number one uh, that, that we establish is that PMU is not really clearly countercyclical. And this contrasts with the perception of what typical proxies uh, of public perception of uncertainty do over the business cycle. In particular, we find that 
policymakers become uncertain about the real economy, in fact, ahead of the financial crisis. Similarly, they become uncertain about financial markets about a year before the, uh, uh, the uh, shock uh, becomes visible in financial data. But then during the heights of the financial crisis, their uncertainty actually goes down. Interestingly, we find that inflation uncertainty is highly pro-cyclical. That is, policymakers become really uncertain about inflation when the economy is doing well. Again, this contrast with the standard notion of how uncertainty evolves over the business cycle. The second set of results uh, pertains to how uncertainty correlates with sentiment. So typically we think about, about uncertainty as, uh, as uh, reflecting the range of possible outcomes, but not being really directional. What we find uh, systematically across different measures of uncertainty that we construct is that uncertainty is in fact highly correlated with negative tone and negative sentiment in the meetings. So negative sentiment for inflation in the left panel means that policymakers, at least during that whole sample period, express negative, uh, ex negative views about inflation going up. And this tends to correlate very strongly with their expression of uncertainty as well, even though in the construction of the two measures, that is the sentiment and the PMU, we use completely disjoint set of sentences. So the relationship is not mechanical. In particular, for, for inflation uncertainty, we show that uh, neither the PMU nor the negative sentiment about inflation in the meeting has any predictive power to what actually happens to inflation subsequently. So we interpret the, this uh, relationship between PMU and sentiment as a reflection of policymakers' concern about rising inflation and that actually does not materialize during the sample we study. Of course, we are constrained by the availability of the uh, transcripts data. We don't have the last five years of data, uh, but uh, th that uh, relationship holds pretty strongly uh, during the uh, uh, years before 2015, uh, up to 2015. What you can also see is that this negative sentiment and uh, uncertainty are very strongly correlated in terms of uh, policymakers thinking about financial markets developments. And as I mentioned, policymakers' uncertainty about financial markets is sort of anticipating what happens in the public domains, in that uncertainty in the meetings about the course of financial markets is high, is strongly elevated about a year before the financial crisis shock uh, actually materializes in the data. Now, uh, our next set of uh, facts about uncertainty pertains to um, uh, their relationship with forecast errors. So what you would expect to happen is that policymakers become increasingly uncertain about uh, the uh, uh, economy when their models start failing. And this is exactly what we find. In particular, we find that for inflation, policy uh, a PMU about inflation uh, is actually strongly positively correlated with the magnitude of forecast errors about inflation that, that materializes in the Fed's Green Book uh, forecast. So uh, this suggests that the uncertainty is related to worry and concern about uh, model misspecification or models not delivering uh, accurate forecasts. We don't find any uh, uh, any relationship for uh, the real uncertainty for the economic PMU uh, and the uh, the uh, magnitude of uh, past forecast errors. Although there is some weak relationship that is directional. However, for the real economy and the markets, past forecast errors uh, are able to explain only about 4% of variation. The relationship is much stronger for inflation.
So to summarize, it seems like policymakers become increasingly uncertain when they sense that the models are not uh, accurately forecasting uh, the economy. What about the relationship between perceived risk and uncertainty? So uh, the distinction that, that uh, I started off with uh, 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 based on Greenspan quote. So in this plot, you can see the, uh, the topic specific uh, PMU indices based only on risk uh, related phrases. Um, and we superimpose that with expression of uncertainty. Again, the set of terms entering the two is completely disjoint. And what you can see is that there is a very strong positive relationship between expression of quantifiable risk and expression of this more uh, unquantifiable Knightian types or type of uncertainty in the meeting consistent with Greenspan's statement that the two notions are really hard to disentangle in practice. There is also significant relationship between our PMU index and measures of public perceptions of policy uncertainty. So here we use the Baker, Bloom and Davis index, as well as the Hastert, Rogers and Sun, and Sun indices that are aimed to reflect how uncertain uh, the the public is about the course of monetary policy. And so the, we do find positive relationship. However, the uh, overall index that we used on the previous slide camouflages quite heterogeneous relationship between public perceptions of uncertainty and internal uncertainty regarding specific components uh, of the economic environment. So in particular, we find that while the uh, uncertainty about the real economy does correlate uh, positively with the public perception of uncertainty about policy, it is inf uh, the uh, inflation uh, uncertainty that policymakers face is in fact negatively correlated with both Baker, Bloom and Davis and the Hastert, Roger and Sun measures well, again, consistent with the fact that policymakers become really uncertain about inflation in good times. So now our uh, main set of results pertains to the question of how uncertainty uh, affects policy preferences or whether it does uh, affect policy preferences at all. And. Uh, we start with a textual uh, measures with a construction of textual measures of policy preferences trying to capture uh, the nature of policy shocks that emanate from the discussions happening in the meetings we develop a set of rules to classify sentences in the policy round of the meeting uh, into uh, a policy language and uh, we then focus on statement by FOMC members only to really zoom into the uh, preferences of uh, actual decision makers at the Fed. We separate their language into hawkish and dovish slant in terms of preferences by uh, very precisely matching policy terms with directional language. And then at each meeting, we construct a policy preferences variable, which is a balance of hawkishness and dovishness uh, intensity expressed at each meeting. And this variable will be our key measure of policy preferences in the meeting that we will try to match uh, with uh, proxies for uncertainty. Now, in terms of preference, in terms of the properties of these hawk and dove measures, they are in fact quite intuitive. Uh, dove uh, preferences uh, spike in uh, uh, downturns, as we would expect. Hawkish preferences are uh, elevated uh, during expansions. And when you stare at the balance measure, it in fact shows that there is that remains significant variation in policy preferences during the zero lower bound period. So one advantage of uh, our approach based on text is that it allows us to allows us to study a long consistent sample period, uh, including the zero lower bound period. And in fact, uh, it allows us also to connect 
uh, to uh, a notion of a monetary policy surprise, which admittedly is quite elusive uh, uh, in terms of uh, available uh, interpretations in the literature. So uh, these uh, textual measures of policy preferences turn out to be in fact very highly informative about what happens to actual uh, policy outcomes in terms of the target changes or, for example, Roman Roma shocks. The signs of the loadings uh, with uh, which uh, uh, those uh, variables uh, load on Hawk and Dove scores and then our uh, balance variable, uh, the HD variable, are intuitive. These measures are highly significant and I, they are highly significant, uh, significant in presence of controls for green book expectations. So we interpret those as a measure of actual policy surprise uh, based on that, that emerges from deliberations in the policy uh, meeting. Quite interestingly, these pure text-based measures of policy preferences explain about a quarter of Romer and Romer shocks that are uh, frequently used for policy analysis. Uh, related to what Ma uh, Michael has been presenting, the hog dove scores are also highly predictive of the uh, information that markets, the financial markets, glean from, uh, from the policy announcements. You see that across a range of measures, including uh, GSS, Gorkaniak, Sack and Swanson, Gertler Karadi, Nakamura and Swanson, uh, Steinson, you see a positive loading across, uh, across these different measures. We show that the text of the transcripts, in fact, is highly predictive of the path of monetary policy uh, a number of uh, quarter ahead, suggesting that it really has a lot of forward looking content to it. So now our goal will be to uh, think about how those policy preferences measured from the, uh, from the text are related to the uh, uncertainty that policymakers express uh, in the economy round of the meeting. So we start with a very simple specification where we regress the HD variable uh, on uh, overall policy index uh, and then on its subcomponents that we identify with our topic topic specific approach. So overall, an increase in uncertainty in the economy round predicts uh, a more uh, a dovish tone. Uh, or a, a more dovish uh, stance of uh, preferences during the policy round. But that aggregate index, again, uh, masks uh, much more interesting effects that emerge when we disaggregate the uncertainty by topics. So looking first at the economy and markets PMU, we find negative signs uh, that are significant, whether or not we control for topic specific sentiments that is directional language in the meeting or green book forecasts uh, from, from prepared by the staff. Uh, this negative coefficient is consistent with uh, the broad demand channel of uncertainty, whereby uh, increased uncertainty would lead to weakening of the economy and therefore uh, a policy uh, uh, response uh, th that is more dovish. Uh, however, the fact that these effects uh, are uh, uh, persistent, even if we control for green book forecasts, suggests that those green book forecasts may not entirely take the effect uh, of uncertainty through the demand channel on board. Uh, interestingly, and in contrast to the, to the coefficients on the real economy, PMU and markets, for inflation PMU, we find a strongly positive response. And this is parallel with uh, the uncertainty about model, uh, model specification also inducing uh, a positive uh, response of policy preferences. Positive coefficient means that uh, increased uncertainty of, uh, about either inflation on models would lead to more hawkish preferences. Finally, the unclassified types of uncertainty are not contributing to uh, a predictive power uh, for the policy preferences 
in a significant way. Now, this was a simple linear specification, um, uh, but the models uh, of optimal monetary policy choice consider frequently a more complicated set of effects uh, that are uh, of multiplicative nature. That is, un uncertainty alters the strength of policy response to the economy, similar to uh, what Michael has been alluding to, uh, that the markets may, uh, may uh, not anticipate correctly the strength of the policy response. So one factor that could be driving uh, the strength of response could be uncertainty as predicted by a variety of models. The theoretical predictions, however, how uncertainty would affect uh, policy are really highly model dependent. So the question is, in the data, uh, how does uncertainty actually affect uh, policymakers' response? Does it lead to strengthening or weakening of that response? And do these effects differ across the different state variables that policymakers care about? So what we will do is to estimate a bunch of text-based policy rules in which we will allow interactions. We will essentially allow the coefficients of the policy reaction function to, de to depend on the extent of uncertainty that policymakers face. So, for example, uncertainty about economy, uh, about sorry, about inflation could alter the strength of the response that policymakers have to uh, fluctuations in inflation and similarly for uh, real GDP growth. It could be that higher uncertainty uh, weakens the response or strengthens the response to expected growth. So let's estimate these regressions and let's see what we are finding when allowing for interactions. The main effect that we find across different specifications is that uncertainty uh, about inflation would amplify the policymakers' response to inflation. And this is probably the most robust feature that we find across different specifications. We do find some effect of uh, economic uncertainty, that is the uncertainty about the real economy, also leading to an amplification of growth response, but this is much more dependent on the different types of controls we include in the specification. So let us take a look at uh, how these effects play out uh, in a graph. So what these graphs are showing you is the, uh, the, the effect of inflation on policy preferences as a function of the amount of uncertainty that policymakers are facing. First, uncertainty about inflation. Second, uncertainty about the real economy. And the effects we are looking at is uh, those of expected inflation on policy preferences and expected real GDP growth on policy preferences. In particular for inflation, what we find is that moving from an environment in which uncertainty about inflation is slow to where uncertainty about inflation is high leads to quite dramatic strengthening of the policy response to inflation. And this is the main effect that we have found uh, uh, before. Uh, we do find some strengthening, some amplification of policy response in reaction to uh, growth, given different levels of uncertainty about, about the real economy. However, this effect is much more sensitive to controls for the first moment. Now, overall, the finding of the amplification uh, effects of uncertainty on policy reaction is inconsistent with the frequently quoted Brynham's conservative principle, uh, conservatism principle, whereby a policymaker that is uncertain about what the effects of their actions would be on the economy might want to be behave more cautious. In contrast, the on, uh, at least the qualitative effects that we find are consistent with um, two types of uh, channels. One is policymaker uh, uh, displaying preference for robustness and or policymakers being uncertain about the dynamics of the economy, in particular about the persistence of the inflation uh, process 
and acting more aggressively in order to prevent costly outcomes. So does this have any reflection uh, in how policymakers talk about uncertainty uh, that they face and then what type of reactions this would induce? And here's a quote for Peter Pratt, who, who in fact acknowledges that exact amplifying effect that we find empirically, that policymakers may want to be aggressive when they face a uh, risk of inflation becoming ingrained uh, in the economy, the risk of inflation being uh, becoming disanchored, and the uh, aggressive action should then serve as a signal of policymakers' commitment to its objectives and as a nudge uh, for expectations to, to uh, become more anchored. So let me conclude. Uh, what we do in this paper, we propose a bunch of new text-based measures of policymakers' uncertainties of different kinds, not just one, uh, which we call PMU, and a new measure of policy preferences that gets us to the question, where do policy shocks actually come from? And uh, we, for identification of uh, effects of uncertainty on policy preferences, we exploit the sequential nature of deliberations in FOMC meetings that uh, structure the, the economy around deliberations before any policy deliberations take place. And our main finding pertains to the fact that inflation uncertainty, just as we face it today, leads to amplification of policy response to uh, uh, fluctuations in, in, uncert uh, in, in inflation. This effect is uh, inconsistent with Brainard's conservatism, but may suggest policymakers' concern about model misspecification, structural change in the economy, preference for robustness. And we also establish this interesting asymmetric relationship uh, between uh, PMU and policymakers' concern, at least in our historical data up to 2015, uh, policymakers' concern about rising inflation. Also, the independent additional effect of uncertainty on policy preferences is actually suggesting that for a long period, there might have been deviations from symmetric, that is quadratic uh, preferences uh, in uh, policy making. There seems to be additional demand shock channel of uncertainty uh, that is at work. And that demand shock channel seems to go beyond what is taken into account uh, in Green Book forecasts. So uh, thank you very much. And I, lo I look forward to your questions.